Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Thai Initiative's next episode of the Thai Lun Tan, our public discussion forum where we get to talk about issues relating to civil discourse in the U.S.-China dialogue. Today, we're joined by Lily Chi in Maryland. Mar Lily Chi oversees special projects on economic competitiveness and global partnerships for Montgomery County Executive Ike Leggett. After serving as spokesperson for the D.C. Department of Insurance, Securities, and Banking and Vice President of Business Development and Marketing for the Washington, D.C. Economic Partnership. He's an immigrant from Shanghai, China, and Lily is also a columnist, speaker, and trainer on cultural competency and immigrant integration. Her community leadership has been tremendous, and it includes chairing the Maryland Governor's Commission on Asian American Affairs and she serves on the board of the Suburban Hospital of Johns Hopkins Medicine. She's been featured in a variety of magazines recently, particularly in a column that we uh, saw on Asian Fortune, quoted in numerous, and quoted in numerous other magazines as a voice for Asian and immigrant professionals in the 21st century. And this article recently in the Asian Fortune was calling for uh, the need for voice and participation in the Chinese American community with regards to the China-US dialogue and relationship. Today we're going to talk with Lily about the issue and the concept of trust and how trust is generated and what Americans of any variety can do to participate in the U.S.-China dialogue as we examine ourselves as citizens. So Lily, welcome. Welcome to the Thai Initiative. This is your first time Thank to join you. us, although we've had some discussions before about your work in Ireland. We're very excited to have you here today. Thanks. Pleased to participate, and thank you for inviting me. Well, thank you for accepting it. So what is it that you've personally seen or heard in your network, because your network is pretty broad and, and various, I'm sure, as well, and what, what have you been seeing and hearing in your network in the past year or so that's motivated you to be speaking out on these issues? What's going on? What do you hear? Well, um, as you mentioned, I'm an immigrant from China. Um, I now um, am an American citizen. I live and work in this incredibly vibrant uh, greater Washington, D.C. region, which has a fast-growing uh, and strong Chinese-American community. And many Americans here uh, routinely also visit China and do business uh, with and in China and study abroad there. Um, so there are a lot of interactions, and I care personally deeply about um, intercultural dialogues and relations because I am an immigrant, and I live sort of between two cultures um, that are quite different still. And I have a lot of observations about community relations. I advocate for uh, greater integration. Um, of the immigrant communities in the local uh, larger community affairs. Um, and so I have some um, personal experiences and perspectives to, uh, to share that I think are important for a greater dialogue about trust building um, at both global and the local level. Um, you know, we are a much more integrated and connected world than uh, ever any, anyone thought was possible, you know, just a, a, a few years ago. And in this super connected world, um, what's global oftentimes quickly become a local issue and can be reflected in many different ways. You know, any headlines can impact community uh, sentiment. Um, so, for example, you know, to answer your question, uh, we, Montgomery County, Maryland, which has the largest Chinese American community in the greater Washington, D.C. region, recently established sister city partnership with Xi'an China and we our county executive led a large delegation of leaders from business civic education and community to visit China and it was all you know very exciting and interesting and we also try to facilitate partnerships with different regions in China um, but in the course of doing that we also heard feedback from different businesses saying they had bad experiences doing business in China Mm -hmm. that they had cold feet about entering into any partnerships and even cautioned us about, uh, you know, getting into any serious partnerships because the Chinese are not to be trusted. You know, they had a terrible experience of intellectual properties being stolen. They never anticipated it would be so difficult to fight any legal battles with companies there. And it was just, you know, uh, several bad accounts. And the word 
usually bad news travel faster than good news, you know, in any context. Yeah. And then you read uh, headlines. It's hard to escape the headlines, you know, whether it's local, you know, national papers like Washington Post or whatever, uh, national news anywhere talking about hackers from China, about cyber threats, and uh, it seemed like a more, um, you know, uh, more often than not, the hackers happen to be, you know, the other from the other side of the Pacific Ocean and uh, are Chinese more more often than not, or even government backed hackers. Uh, whether these are uh, verified information or not. Uh, they, they they seem to send a consistent message that that there's a trust issue with with China and Chinese in general, whether they are government related, individual related, or business related. You know, so uh, I think these are all cumulatively uh, reasons for concern for anyone who is interested in uh, doing business with China, doing having any relationship with China, or just by virtue of being Chinese Americans. Um, and and so I think. Uh, both at local and global level, uh, this is a very serious topic because it affects individual well-being, community relations, and bilateral relations. You're so right. You've shared a lot there, and one of the main things that you talked about that is near and dear to my heart is the issue of being able to adequately or properly attach behavior that is coming from one particular aspect or institution and then ascribing it in a larger sense to just China. And I think that one of the things that happens is that because Americans in general are relatively less informed on institutions and identities in this large thing that is China, we end up simply using the word China to describe anything that comes from that part of the world. Whereas we have to stop and think about what is China. And I tell people China is a civilization. And the distinction between the civilization and the nation, the distinction between the nation and the institutions that make up that nation or even the provinces, all the way down to individual people, there's a lot of different identities in there. Right. And you've identified it's very difficult to get people past the right. argument that because they see untrustworthy behavior on the part of the government or the party or a company, that that doesn't necessarily translate into the reason for that untrustworthy behavior coming out of that because they're Chinese. Because then that's where you get into the very bad stereotype. But nevertheless, there are bad behaviors going on, aren't there? What kind of bad behaviors have you personally witnessed that you would say are part of the reason why people are adequately feeling these? Well, I think I, you know, I, I have heard uh, from businesses um, in our region um, that have had the bad experiences, um, and you know, they decided to pull back. And um, I cannot name the name of the company, but we also had a bad experience in terms of, uh, you know, uh, an agreed upon partnership that you know did not kind of fell apart. Um, in, in the business part, it, it was not a government deal. It was, you know, but government could only be a liaison or a facilitator, so to speak, to bring businesses together. You know, uh, to hopefully businesses themselves would uh, broker a deal. Uh, but still, uh, watching from uh, the side, it was not an ideal scenario. It was not clearly communicated, and um, we just felt that it could have been done um, much more. Productively, if we had communicated better, uh, there could be numerous reasons about that. But whenever things like that happen, when a party decided to not honor uh, the agreement that was already signed, then people believe that you you cannot be trusted anymore next time. You know, because this is a country. I mean, United States is a country where people believe uh, in the rule of law. Um, not just relationship, not just the goodness of your word, although goodness of your word is very, very important. Um, but once you sign on the dotted line, that's final. You know, uh, you cannot come back next day and say, "Oops, I changed my mind because I don't feel like it's a good deal anymore." You know, <laughs> right? Uh, so, you know, there are a lot of cultural elements to that, a lot of traditions that go with it. Um, and, and as you said uh, uh, at the beginning. 
that because Americans, by and large, still have very limited understanding of the vastness and the depth of Chinese cultural traditions and many nuances, um, it just, uh, judging from headlines, w several bad experiences, uh, they just tend to reach that conclusion. Um, um, and it's really an unfortunate situation um, for a lot of us who have any level of connection with China, personally or culturally. Right. So I think, and I'm sure you agree, that what we need to be doing corporately as a community is grabbing the positive examples of where trusting relationships have been created, and we need to be talking about those and elevating them and learning from them as best practices, taking them apart and analyzing what was it that was done that yeah. actually generated that better relationship. Could you, are you able to share with us an example of something that has been done that has really created lasting trust? Well, you know, I think um, uh, at several levels. Uh, there, as I mentioned, that in this uh, greater Washington, D.C. region, uh, which has hundreds of thousands of Chinese, many of them came already highly educated. They are professionals. They are successful. They go back and forth between China and the United States. Um, they are active brokers of many uh, cross um, institutional cross-cultural relationships between educational institutions, businesses, um, nonprofits, and, and all that. So I think those uh, frequent exchanges of information, of goodwill visits, if you will, and business relationships are a great thing um, that um, overall can break down barriers and, and misunderstandings and uh, enforce and in, uh, reinforce a sense of trust. Know. Um, and also, I think uh, at a local level, uh, I have seen a lot of uh, uh, professional organizations or hometown associations, um, just community groups um, organized in any fashion, being highly active in engaging local government officials, engaging people from beyond the Chinese community, uh, you know, through Lunar New Year activities, through any kind of cultural activities. Um, or, or non-cultural activity, professional activities, whatever. Um, I think I I've seen communities, being Chinese community leaders and members, being more mindful about uh, engaging with the larger community. Hmm. Um, and these are all great signs of, of progress. And more importantly, they are they are also being more mindful about political participation, which is so important. Um, if you don't pay attention to local policy issues getting involved on the political front, you you will not uh, be perceived as um, Americans, so to speak. You will not have mm -hmm. um, community power, you know, no matter how large you are, if you are not engaged and united um, and, and be visible uh, on the political front. You will be more likely to be perceived as foreigners, um, more likely to be uh, dismissed as inconsequential to, to the political process or dynamic. Lily, that's so neat to hear you bringing in the idea and the aspect, the reality of community power and community politics. This is an area specifically that Eric Liu, the founder of Citizen University, has been okay. starting to expound on. Do you, have you talked with or, or taken any of this also in dialogue with Eric Liu of Citizen University? Is he the author of uh, a book that I read like, oh, 10 years ago? Uh, I'm not sure if that's the same person. He has had several books. Accidental he Asian? Is he the author of a The Accidental Asian? I believe that is accurate. I okay. He was speechwriter for Bill Clinton? Um, in yes. His life. If that's the person we're talking about, then yeah, I'm a fan of his his thoughts on Asian, being Asian American. You know, but here's a big distinction between people like Eric Liu who are uh, American born and bred, and people like me. You know, I grew up in Shanghai, China during Cultural Revolution and went through a lot of political turmoils. Mm -hmm. uh, so I do have a first hand account of uh, Chinese cultural dynamics and then, you know, have been living in the United States for, uh, you know, two and a half decades. Um, so I also have a pretty good understanding of Americans' way of thinking, if mm -hmm. there is such a, such a thing, you know. That's right. Uh, there are certain just predominant cultural uh, thinking. Uh, what's acceptable? What's not? You know, I, I can see how they can easily clash. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of the either bigger value issues or little nuance issues. You know. 
Well, Lily, it is people like you who we need to be turning to more and more to listen to and to learn from what those best practices have been and what they are. And as the Thai Initiative continues on about its work and grows, we look forward to a continuing relationship with you. And in fact, we can look forward to July when we will be out in your neck of the woods in Washington, D.C. with our conference. I hope and I know that we can expect to see you and having even further dialogue on this and other issues uh, related to the development of uh, business and investment opportunities in such a way that uh, we hope will generate more opportunities for trust. Great. Do you have any particular projects that you're involved in right now that you'd like to just give a quick mention to to encourage our readers, who are our listeners, who are specifically in your neck of the woods? Is there anything going on that you'd like to promote for people to get involved in? in generating more civil dialogue? Well, we have a lot of Chinese-American uh, organizations. Um, they are active brokers of relationships, uh, cross uh, bilateral relationships. Um, and we also, at the government, local government level, uh, maintain a, a good relationship, working relationship with the Xi'an government and uh, between our educational institutions, they have active dialogues, um, and periodically we would also um, invite or entertain Chinese uh, delegations, government officials, business delegations to come here and check out investment opportunities and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure, you know, uh, to the outsiders who don't live in the region how they can participate uh, in the things we do here, um, but for the people in the greater BC region, um, Many of them, you know, are already quite plugged in. Um, and um, since I chair the government, um, I'm sorry, since I chair the Maryland Governor's Commission on Asian American Affairs, uh, we try to encourage uh, communities from different Asian countries and not just from China to um, promote right. what they do to the larger community, you know. That's good. Well, we certainly hope that we'll see a wide variety of Americans getting involved in such committees and such activities in mm -hmm. communities throughout the United States. So thank you and for being if, I could, if I could make, I'm sorry to interrupt you, if I could make uh, one, one, one more point yes. in terms of trust building. I think, you know, it's not easy to be an immigrant um, and it's not, especially not easy to be a Chinese American when your home country on the one hand is so interesting, dynamic, and vibrant, and a place many people would like to visit, but on mm -hmm. the other hand, they have been, you know, so criticized by the Western media, especially uh, American uh, mainstream media, for many reasons, you know, whether it's domestic issues or international issues and all that. So we have to walk that fine line and psychologically balance it ourselves of uh, being from China but being American, and, and I, I think, you know, I hope I'm speaking for a lot of Chinese Americans like myself. We would appreciate some uh, level of sensitivity among especially public officials in this country in terms of respecting that dynamic and refrain from using uh, divisive languages like uh, thieves from China or you know whatever, uh, using any languages that may come across as not being respectful to a culture or a people. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Because, because sitting in the audience listening to them talk like this the, did make me cringe, you know, as, as a Chinese, uh, as an ethnic Chinese, which is an identity that I was born with and I'm proud of culturally. Um, mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean I'm responsible for any wrongdoings <laughs> from anybody across the river or ocean, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And what you just shared with us is an example of how we want to point out behaviors that are taking place, not just in the other, but in ourselves as well. We need to be conscious not simply of things that we want to avoid doing, but things that we want to do. Right. Now, when we have a national dialogue going on in America that does such labeling and looks at things as if it's a, a bunch of thieves, that is the kind of talk that is itself a behavior that leads to a sense of, well, within, we're not really sure how much we can trust you. Right. So I think that we do have tremendous strengths in this American culture that do help people to see why and how we can trust one another and why others can trust us. But we can never take it as an assumption that we are trusted simply because we're American. 
our people can't be trusted because they're Chinese. It's because of the behaviors. And so those behaviors really need to be highlighted, especially the positive ones, and not just avoiding a negative, right? That's right. Absolutely. Well, Lily, I really look forward to hearing and reading more from you as time goes on. Uh, I wish you a very happy conclusion of the Lunar New Year. I <laughs> you. Yes, I'm enjoying it. Good. And Thank you. Unless if you have anything else you want to add, we will now conclude our Tyloon Town. Great. Thank you again for giving me the opportunity. Thank you. 再见. 再见.